Welcome to the Advance Your Art podcast, where we talk about the journey from artist to entrepreneur and everything in between. You've worked hard to hone your craft. Now take it to the next level with tips, techniques, strategies, and routines used by successful artists to grow their businesses and careers. Now, let's get started and have some fun with your host, Yuri Cataldo. Well, hello, Marvin. Welcome to the show. How are you doing this evening? Hey, if I was doing any better, I'd explode, Yuri. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm. I'm doing well. I don't think I'm doing as well as you, but uh, I'm, I'm doing well. <laughs> uh, I've looked into you. You're doing quite well for yourself. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, you know, f- flattering me is a good way to start this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you and I have just recently met. You're someone who's done a lot of different things. So I'd like to start off by asking you to describe yourself and what you do. Okay, well, I am uh, 69 years young, and I've been a lifelong entrepreneur. Uh, I was first a hippie rock and roll guitar player right out of college. I did that for probably 10, 15 years. And uh, then I got married. The kids were on the way. I hadn't quite made it as the rock and roll star that I aspired to be. And, uh, you know, playing the jukebox cover tunes at the local pub just wasn't getting it for me anymore. So I had to sort of grow up and get a real job, although it wasn't a job. I uh, I actually, I, I started studying Zen, and I joined a Zen community in uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan. I was living in Michigan at the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the other uh, head students at the temple was a carpenter. I also had carpenter skills. And we started a little, you know, uh, bootstraps business. Uh, We we printed up these flyers. This was before computer and internet and all that. We printed up flyers claiming that we could do anything in the home improvement business. Mm -hmm. And uh, we spread them all over the neighborhood and we started getting calls. And the flyer claimed we could do anything. (laughs) 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 And uh, uh, so we'd get a call, we'd get a job. If we didn't know how to do it, we'd go down to the the store and buy us one of those sunset books on how to do it. Mm -hmm. Study up, and then we'd buy the materials, we'd sign the contract, and go do the job. And we, we did very good work, and we got word of mouth. Long story short, eventually it turned into an actual business. Mm-hmm. I eventually bought my partner out because he was moving on. He was going to actually, he had become ordained. He was going to start his own temple. I bought him out and built that company into, uh, well, now this is back in the eighties, mind you. Well, we were doing in excess of two million a year. I had 14 carpenters in the field, uh, five office staff, including an architectural designer, secretary, bookkeeper, and all that. And, uh, had a good run for about 15 years during the, the housing boom of the 80s. Uh, the only reason I got out of that was because, and you have to understand, you're, uh, that housing boom was, it was money that wasn't real. It wasn't real money. It was perceived value. Your $200,000 home next year was worth two fifty. dollars Then it was worth $300,000. And then it was, so people had all this equity in their homes to, take out a second mortgage and put an addition on the house, you know, uh, put a sunroom on, remodel the kitchen, finish the basement, all that. Well, in the mid-90s, that bubble popped. <laughs> and all of a sudden, uh, you had a $400,000 mortgage on a house that was only worth $200,000 now. Mm. So the home improvement business tanked, and I sort of had to scuttle the whole thing. And here I was in my mid-50s and had to figure out something else to do. So I got into uh, some different multi-level uh, network marketing companies. I'm a pretty good public speaker and a motivator. Mm-hmm. So I did pretty well. I had a couple good runs with those, but eventually I tired of all the ruhaha type of, you know, pump you up every night. Uh, it was just a lot of hype. 
Yeah. And a few people made a lot of money while everyone else didn't make anything. In fact, they spent more money going to conferences and buying tapes and motivational books and stuff than they did actually make money. So I just lost interest in it. Uh, my heart wasn't in it anymore. I became a writer. Mm -hmm. I published some books and in the process became a professional editor. And uh, I actually make more money as an editor now than I have with book royalties. Although I would have made a lot more in my books if I'd have had access to the program I'm running now, which we'll get into a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But um, they just went along like that for a while. Uh, and then a year ago, uh, one of my old author clients that I had edited his book for looked me up on Facebook and said he had this idea uh, for a business. And, uh, uh, he ran it by me, and I thought it was just brilliant. So... I actually relocated down from Michigan, came down here to North Carolina to be in close proximity with him, and uh, we launched this new business. So here I am uh, knocking on age 70, and I'm starting a new enterprise because I just have the entrepreneurial spirit. Here I, I, I can't sit still and not do anything. Uh, if, if I go too long without some kind of a new challenge, I just wither up and die. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, you've definitely had just in the you know in the short few paragraphs you've just mentioned a very interesting career, and I so I'd like to find some parallels between them. So, walk me through the process: hippie rock and roll guitarist, then Zen, then entrepreneur. So what what was it within there? So you know you were again you were this rock and roll guitarist who then started studying and becoming more Zen and then met someone who then you then started a company with, what were you, I guess, what were you thinking at the time and why particularly did you pick to get into home improvement? Well, uh, initially the partnership was just, uh, uh, we were living communally. It was a way uh, in the temple, the, all the students, yeah. we lived communally. And so we needed money to, to, uh, uh, the temple was actually just an old house that we had bought, and we needed to renovate it. And in the process of renovating it, of course, we needed money. Mm -hmm. And so it was a way to raise money for the uh, for the temple, for the community. And uh, but then eventually, I I got out of Zen training. My 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 Zen. The thing about studying under Zen master is eventually they want you to, you know, take up their Dharma. It's called and uh, ordain you as a as one of their priests, you know, and uh, you go out and start another temple. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and I, I just couldn't go that way. I had a family coming, and I was getting more and more interested in the business side of what we were doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was paying attention to this housing boom going on, and I noticed how easy it was to get home improvement jobs. So I think that's why I really turned into a businessman. I, okay. I just I studied it. And I went to some seminars on, you know, uh, well, there was this one seminar about, uh, oh, what's the guy's name? He talks about, uh, craftspeople that do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, but they don't know the business side. <clears throat> you know, you can be a good carpenter, but that doesn't mean you can run a carpentry business. Mm -hmm. You can be a good, uh, I don't know. You could, you could be a good filmmaker, but you can't necessarily run a filmmaking business. It's a whole different animal. Right. So I started educating myself on the business side of, of the remodeling industry, went to some seminars, and um, that's how I, I guess, yeah, the, the rock and roll thing wasn't really entrepreneurialism. It was a way to not have a J-O-B, which I called just over broke, you know, which reminds me of a, a, a great Jim Rohn statement. I don't know if you're familiar with Jim Rohn. He's a great business mentor. Yeah, I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He says, you know, if you don't have a plan for your life, chances are you're going to fall into someone else's plan. And guess what they have planned for you? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so I just, it intrigued the idea of going into business for myself because there's sky's the limit. There's risks, you know, you can lose. And I have lost big time a couple mm -hmm. times in my life. But the excitement of it and the, the freedom of it being your own boss, no no ceiling over you can go as high as you want. <clears throat> yeah. It's a great country to be able to do that in. Definitely. Yeah. So you you brought up a very very good point 
and that is actually kind of the the thesis of this entire podcast and that there's a lot of people who are trained to or you know trained are musicians but they don't know the business side of the music industry or in your yeah. instance you know you talked about that they 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 know the craft part of not the business side of the craft uh, of model making so what were some key elements that you were taught that help you separate the process of remodeling from the business side of that business or the business side of the remodeling business? Oh, it was, it was going to seminars and I remember I went to one and this guy said, uh, he questioned all of us in, in the, in the, in the room. Uh, and we were all business owners, right? We, we owned our own property business. He said, uh, what hundreds is the Dow Industrial Market at? And none of us knew. He said, you're all CEOs of a company. You don't even know where the stock market it is right now. You haven't evaluated the market. And it, it, it dawned on me, I, you know, I need to pay more attention, be more circumspect mm -hmm. in what's going on in the, not only just my industry, but the economy as a whole to make plans based on, you know, take a look at uh, projections and, and existing statistics. I don't know if that answered your question. Maybe say it again. I maybe didn't get it just right. No, I mean it. It really did. Of of because you're right. A, a lot of people, let's say, you know, regardless of industry they're in, oftentimes focus with you know just on their own unique business or just what they're working on, and not at the larger economic forces, which is kind of what you were speaking about. Is there so besides I mean, looking uh, at, at that, um, is, are there other elements too that that you should help look at to separate from the you know the craft from the business? Well, absolutely. Uh, I, I actually hired a uh, a business consultant to come in and look at my company, mm -hmm. and uh, he he showed me how to make a real profit and loss statement, and 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 uh, you know he would go out in the field and observe my workers working. And he'd get feedback from my clients. And uh, he taught me so much on the difference between being a carpenter and running a carpentry company. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's where I really, I, I learned a lot from that, man. I, and I learned, learned quite a bit as far as being able to become a successful businessman. Sure. So let's let's jump a little bit ahead then to your, your years spent in the, the network marketing space. Um, what were some things that you pulled from your time there that have helped you in what you're doing now? Let me think about that. Sure. I would say that, uh, well, for one thing, I developed into a, a comfortable public speaker. Mm -hmm. Although I'd been a performer all my life. I mean, I performed in church when I was two years old, but... <laughs> Public speaking is different than standing behind a microphone and holding a guitar and, and showing off how fast you are to the girls so you can get laid that night. It's a different thing. <laughs> so <laughs> but I, I developed into a more of a leader. Mm -hmm. You know, to be successful in network marketing, you have to lead your – you have to identify your leaders and lead them and manage them. And you have to hold business meetings and be inspirational in front of people. And uh, and I just garnered a lot of life experience too from it that helped me into my writing career mm -hmm. because there was I mean I mean I just I saw success and failure all the time and uh, entered into so many different relationships and to be a good writer you re you really have to know like I write novels and so I create these characters and these characters are based on either a person or sort of an amalgamation of certain persons that I've known. You know, so you can, you can really might write more realistic if you're thinking about an actual human being when you're creating a character than just trying to pull it out of thin air. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when was it in your career that you decided to start writing? It was in my uh, mid fifties. Okay. Mid fifties. I, I started thinking about it actually during during the network marketing phase, mm -hmm. and. Uh, when that sort of puts out, <clears throat> uh, I decided, you know what? And I wasn't really hurting for money when I decided not to do that. I had made.